right, let's start. This is not the talk. Uh, the talk is here. So if you see uh, the title, it's called Gochas and Landmines. Um, I hope I'm uh, audible at the back. Cool, awesome. All right, let's start. So welcome to PyCon Slovakia, another talk, another day. Uh, my name is Manoj, and uh, I go by only real MVP on the internet. And um, as my day job, I work as a software engineer at Yelp in Hamburg. So what this talk is going to be about, it's going to be about like small little nits and tricks uh, in Python where like a lot of people get stuck in the beginning. So I compiled a few, a list of few things uh, which we will explore together and uh, we'll see why those things happen. And uh, some of the examples will uh, make you feel like this, so be prepared for that. And uh, let's start with a really simple example, list repetition. So this is really in so I'll have to like code as well. Um, so let's create a, a simple list. It's a two-dimensional list. Um, let's try to run this and uh, let's try to print this. All right, fairly simple. It's a list with uh, a lot of zeros. Um, it's a four cross five uh, 2D array or 2D list. What I want to do is I want to replace some numbers by one because it's zero right now. So what I do is I run this for loop and I change um, some of the values. What I'm doing is I'm specifically, I specifically want to change the values of the second index and the, the first three uh, columns. So which is gonna be like the, the third of, uh, of these um, arrays and it should be like one, 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 zero, zero. Fairly good, let's try to print it out. It works, right? Or no, maybe not. So let's see what's happening here. Uh, so my intention was to just change like the third column, the third uh, array in this uh, list of arrays and uh, just like the first three values. But it seems like it's changing like all the arrays, all the uh, single 1D list inside this 2D list. And why is this happening is, uh, it's pretty simple. Um, it gets much more obvious when you actually try these things again and again. So when you cr create this list in the beginning here, it's five zeros together, it's one array, and you, then you multiply with like four times to create like a four rows of it. But what's ex ex actually happening is, you're not like creating like four different like single uh, 1D arrays, but it's like one single D array, and it's like reference like, like three more times, basically. So what happens is, if you know references, it just point to the same place, point to the same memory address, and hence this, like example. You can fix this. One straight uh, example, uh, like a way to fix this is using list comprehensions and you can uh, do it in this way and uh, then we can do the same thing again. And oops, uh, oh, new list. Sorry, this is all IPython and there you go. Fairly easy, right? Let's move on to another example. Oh, I did it down here, it's fine. Now we can just move on. Spaces and tabs, uh, a widely popular like known thing about like using and mixing like spaces and tabs as we have been doing for a long time. So let's see what happens. Um, I'm not saying um, now in Python 3 we have a, an exception that raises if you like mix those things. But usually what happens is, let's say you're working on a team and uh, some 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 developer on your team is using like four spaces as as his like or her um, preferences and as editor, and uh, somebody else is using like two spaces. It can also be like eight spaces, seven spaces. It's like all up to you. But the only problem is when you like have this like code transfer, like you know somebody is using your code on their machine, it's not going to be like consistent. So you you can see the four spaces uh, on the first one uh, reduces to two. So then it just uh, this modified like goes like two extra spaces which is bad. Um, so this is the error which uh, is now raised in Python 3, but try not to like mix spaces and tabs or just have a single uh, team-wide developer kind of like preference uh, that you can like configure your editors the same way. Typecasting of strings. All right, so as we know that we have like type typecasting in Python, so you can have an object and you can like cast it to another object. What about like casting like strings into float? 
this is this is clearly dumb, right? I mean, why would you even do this thing? But this is Python. So we have like some special strings and uh, you can do things like this. And INF is just basically like infinity. If you can do this, then we know that infinity goes like both, both the sides. Then you can also do this like negative infinity. What this also means is uh, you can have comparisons because now you have an, a number on your uh, number line and you can compare it with like some arbitrary integer and that works. That works as well. And uh, so for a long time, it was not included as a part of the, uh, the standard library, but now you can also use it directly from the math module. So import math and you can just do this math.inf and it gets you the same thing. All right, this is my favorite. I love this. I would love to ask like uh, you guys, what do you think about this? So let's create a simple uh, a dictionary. It's an empty dictionary right now. And uh, let's have a key going to JavaScript. Let's have another key going to Node.js. And let's have another key going to Python, right? All right. So I created an empty dictionary. I added three, dic I added three keys and uh, corresponding like three different values. Let's try to see what's there. All right, so as I as expected, I can see there are three keys and three values, right? Probably not. Let's see what's happening. Um, so when you like try to do this thing, you expect that, okay, at least there should be like two keys, like one and true, if not like one and 1.0. So let's explore like what's happening behind the bush. So dictionaries work on the concept of hashing. So when you create a, when you create a new key value pair in the dictionary, it like takes the key, hashes it, and stores it into the memory address. Um, it turns out that the hashes for like numbers like 1 and 1.0, 5 and 5.0, or like any numbers like that is the same. Also, so this is the implementation of uh, this bool object in, uh, in, the C, in, the, in the standard C. And uh, it says that the boolean type is a subtype of int. That means that the true goes to 1 and false goes to 0. All right, now it makes sense. Uh, now that we know that true will always be zero, uh, sorry, true will always be one, that means that when we are doing this A of one, um, A of true equals Python, we are basically doing A of one equals Python, which is replacing the value which was uh, created before. And also now we know that if it's, we are, um, if the dictionaries work on the concept of hash and we have like the same hash uh, values, it's gonna replace the, uh, the value again. So initially you begin with a of one, starts with the JavaScript, then you say a 1.0 equals Node.js, which replaces it to Node.js, so a1 becomes Node.js. And then you say a true equals Python, which is like a1 equals Python, which again replaces the value. And uh, some, some, for some people it might seem like Python is like shadowing JavaScript. It's not the case, it can be any string. Um, but it's just how the, uh, the Python is implemented and uh, this is just the implementation details. Uh, all right, but this also means that you can also do like some weird things in your code, which I don't recommend, but you can do it. So if you, if you have a list four, five, six, and you say, give me the, the true index, which is basically the first index, you can do these things. Let's talk about integers. Fairly simple, two integers, A and B, having the same value, 15. We know that every, uh, ob everything, in object, uh, everything in Python is an object, and every object has a memory address. Let's try to find those addresses. All right, um, I have two objects, and we know that if I have, if I have an object, it, it lives in a separate memory address. So I was expecting that the uh, A and B, they're gonna be in the same place, oh, sorry, in, the, in different place because they're two different objects. All right, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Let me try, let me start again. I have two numbers. A and B again, uh, both are having the same value as we did before. <coughs> let's try, <coughs> sorry, let's try to like print the values uh, of the memory uh, address. All right, all right, what's happening, what's happening? Um, now that I see that both the addresses are different, right? Um, oops. So let's take a, take a pause and like try to understand what's happening. 
It's again like some implement implementation detail inside the Python library. So what Python does is uh, there's a small optimization we do for like smaller integers, specifically numbers from negative five to 256. And if you have any number between those range, so what, what happens when you create an integer or like any other object in Python, in this case, an integer, and integers come from this, um, um, this data, data uh, I forgot the name, but it's, it comes from this pi long object in, uh, in the standard C, uh, in the implementation details. And uh, when you try to create an integer, it goes to this like integer pool or pi into pool or something like that. And then it gives you an object. But what happens for like small integers, they just optimize it so that when you create these integers in this range negative five to 256, they're not gonna get the same object. They're not gonna get a different object every single time. But what's gonna happen is they're gonna give back the same object. And in Python, we have something called a reference count which says that, okay, how many times a single object has been referenced in different places. So it just gives you the same object back um, in this list, in this range, and it just increases the reference count. And you can also like check um, the reference counts for um, any number. So let's say if I have like, okay, this is nice. Um, NC equals, and I think, OS, I, because I forgot where it is, um, so I can see sys dot get ref counts. Um, okay, so I can see it's two times, and but if you see for A, it's like 152 times. Like what? Well, I just created a new IPython session, and uh, I just have I should I should expect like just two references because like A and B they're referenced like just two times. Um, sorry, C and D are referenced two times, and A and B are, are, all, are also referenced two times. But it's, it's just how the implementation works for like making like small optimizations. All right, now we understand integers. Let's talk about strings. Let's try uh, to do the same example. I have two strings, one and one, the, the, the number. And uh, so we in Python, we have something called an is operator, which can compare like two objects, not by the value, but by reference. And um, we'll also like talk about this thing again, but what happens if I do A is B? It is true, which means that both the objects are referencing to the same memory space. All right, sounds good to me. Because they, let's see, let's assume, okay, we, we don't know many, any, like much about this thing. So I'm gonna do it again. I have two other strings, A and B. It has one ampersand and two, and B equals also like one ampersand. Let me try to do this again. Ooh, what? What is happening? Uh, because now I was expecting that those two strings are the same, just as in the previous example. So this is another optimization in Python. Um, specifically, it's like a pe people optimization. And um, so what it does is something in, there's something in Python called interning. And um, specifically for this case, it's like string interning. And what it does is all the strings uh, having uh, this, length zero and one, they basically get the same memory address. All the strings which are the same, they also get the same memory address. All the strings which are the same, but they have some ASCII characters in that, they don't get the same memory address. There's another exception. Okay, this is, this is for like, um, like simple, single, single length strings. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, all right. So you, you all know probably this, this, uh, this kind of behavior uh, or like implementation when you want to uh, replicate a string like certain number of times. So in this case, I'm saying that, hey, multiply or like just expand this A like 20 times and also trust me, this is 20, I counted it myself. So this is true, all right, makes perfectly perfect sense. And um, this is a little bigger. Um, you can see it's a little bigger and you can trust me on this. And um, oh, wait, what happened? Um, sorry. What? <laughs> All right. Okay. This is, this is what I was not expecting because, uh, All right. Something changed. I don't know, like this morning what happened, uh, but 
I'll tell you like what's the case about um, also in like string interning, there's this thing in Python, or I'll say there was because I think I'm using the new Python version or like my interpreter has changed. Um, so initially in Python 2, when you used to like do this uh, string expansions, um, we used to have um, also when uh, you read about like string, in string interning, there's uh, this thing here in the people.c uh, in Python. So what it actually compares is if the length of the string is uh, less than 20, it basically replaces uh, at compile time with the same object, but it's not the case with like any string with a length of more than 20. So I don't know, I will definitely like look at, take a look at it again, but as I read this uh, the C code, I, it, it felt like it's gonna misbehave, uh, but yeah, let's keep it as an exception for now. All right, trailing spaces. Uh, if somebody has been coming from like uh, languages like C or Java, you might expect that this is not supposed to happen uh, because no, I'm not putting any explicit end line at the end. But in Python, like print um, by default, like comes with an end line. And uh, a lot of people might find some uh, weird ways to like fulfill this, you know? So they would write something, a code like this, which basically removes that end line but in Python, um, Python 3, uh, you also have, uh, like print is basically a function and you can pass like some arguments and one of the arguments is end and you can say, hey, I don't want the uh, new line anymore. I just want to like, just like nothing. And then you can like fulfill it again and be happy. <laughs> Catching multiple exceptions. Everyone does write, write tests, uh, does exception handlings and sometimes you have to handle multiple exceptions. Initially, how it used to work was people used to write, hey, try doing something and accept a, a specific exception, comma, just raise that exception and print the exception or like do whatever you want to do. This actually doesn't work because uh, in Python, you can't uh, provide like multiple exceptions in like uh, just like one after the other until and unless they are inside a, a tuple. Now this should work, but let's say you wanna try putting, like printing the error as well. So this used to work, it will not work now because this used to work in Python 2. In Python 3, we deprecated this and now um, we have to use this as parameter or like as keyword uh, and then it will work as expected. So just a few things around like catching exceptions, like specifically catching multiple exceptions. Um, in Python 2, 3, whatever you use, Okay, let's talk a little bit about the syntactic sugar. Really simple, I have a number, I wanna like increment it by something else. I can do it in like two different ways. I have a number, I wanna add 42 to it, so I can do either the first one or the second one. Basically, if you wanna take an example, it's, it would work like this. I have one, I add 42, like both these ways, it's, I, I'm gonna get like 43. Fair enough, let's talk about lists. Just remind that we learned something there, but we're gonna use it now. So I have a list, I have three different numbers, and uh, I wanna add a specific number four and get the ID, fair enough. I have another um, expression here and I wanna add this number five and I wanna see what the ID is. It looks like the ID has changed, but I'm still working on the Z, uh, my, uh, this variable. So I expect it to be the same all the time, but now I'm using like two different ways of this uh, adding a certain number to this particular list. So it's misbehaving. It's so why this, oh, okay. Um, yeah, intelligent. So now what, what's happening here is these two, these two ways of like adding something uh, is totally different. So what happens here is this happens like in place uh, extending of the list. Basically you can also use like z.extend and the second one is basically saying that, hey, it's like not just one single operation, it's taking a list, adding the five, and returning the new list. So now in this case, when it's doing something on Z, it's basically, I have a Z, and then I do something to it, and then I return a new object. So it's not gonna be the same object anymore. We can see more examples. So let's talk about class attributes and instant attributes. Let's say you have a class, and um, you have this number 42 and uh, you have this init method and say that, hey, I want this number to be changed to something else. I create an instance, I get this value 43. Fair enough. 
in a different uh, way, if I have a class attribute um, and I just have my number, I'll just get it like directly. I don't have to like do anything like complications. All right, so let's create a class. And uh, I have a list and what I wanna do is I want to initialize this within, uh, uh, I want to like have a list and add something to that. And let me create some objects. I create this with 42. All right, sounds good. I pin the value, fair enough. I create another instance. All right, fair enough. Oh, maybe not, maybe not. What's happening here? Um, we learned something um, just a little back. Uh, there's some difference between using that syntactic sugar of like adding something to a particular object in Python. And that's literally uh, the same thing with what's happening here. So in this case, um, if I want to change the behavior, or how do you do this? Okay, all right, so now I'm, I'm having the same class, but my the way of uh, changing uh, my this particular list is now a little bit different. So now what's happening is I'm getting an object, I'm doing something to it, I'm returning a new object. So every single time I will have my class, it will be, it will look like I have this class, I create on one instance, 42, got 42, I have another instance, 100, got 100. All right, save my life. Okay, moving on to list slicing, um, really easy. Uh, I have a list, I have five numbers, and I wanna do something like this, which is uh, probably not good. But the problem is, if I have something in my code somewhere, it's never gonna tell me there's some something wrong going on. So for cases like these where you would expect that, hey, you can't just get like a, a new slice from a list which is not which doesn't even exist in the in the current list, you have to write some tests. When you like test these things, like make sure you like you know consider these edge cases, which are not like supported by Python. Mutable arguments. Um, oops. Okay, no worries. Um, I have a function which takes immutable arguments as a parameter. I, it's, a, it's, a, it's an empty list. I just append like a number to it and I just print it out. All right, I create my function with one, two, three. I get one, two, three, two, two, two. I create uh, another, another object, uh, another list with one and two. I get one, two, 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 two. All right, this, this sounds nice, easy. <clears throat> All right. Um, if this function is like call like repetitively uh, without any argument, just because we know that, okay, it has a default argument, right? So we don't have to pass a parameter. So we can always like call functions with some default uh, arguments, like just by um, calling them without anything. But in this case, it looks like <clears throat> something's weird happening because it's just like calling the function repetitively and just getting something which you don't expect. So why it's happening is the state of uh, that particular argument is not being changed. It's not like an empty list every single time. So when you write that function with that default argument, it's done there. Like I, get, I got an X, it's an empty list, and the next function calls, whatever you do to that, it's always gonna take that like list like just like that. I mean, this is a, this is, this is a separate ex execution. This is not like, this is not after this, uh, but to avoid the situation, like first, like don't use like mutable de default arguments in your parameters. Even if you do so, check um, like if you even if you want to like have a functionality like this, use your parameter as none, and uh, you can check if that is none or not. And then if it's none, then you can create a new list, and uh, you can say, hey, my def my func x equals none, and then you can check if x is not none or something. Then you can uh, add a new list and add a, start with a new empty list and then you can do all your um, execution. String concatenation. So this is all going on the, the previous things that we saw uh, in the beginning. There's like a bunch of code here, but what's happening basically is there are two methods which adds, which does literally the same thing. The way they work is one of them uses this string with addition operator and one of them one uses this append so this is, um, and I'm just trying to like see like how much time both of these things take because they're basically doing the same thing. So I would be interested if I do something like this in my code, like how is that gonna affect the, uh, the time? 
So it looks like the first one is taking like way more, like more than like 30 times or something. Less than 30, I mean, around like 30 times. And the, the answer to this is exactly the same. Just because we're using this behavior, it's not just like adding this particular string to the object, but it's taking that object, doing something and returning it. So it's not just like one object. So usually what happens is um, in the previous examples, when we learned about this plus equal operator, it's not just one operator. It, in, the, in the behind in Python, it uh, calls something uh, as a dunder i add, like underscore underscore i add. And that's how it happens. And also I can give you another example, um, a small tuple example, which you might have seen a lot of times. Um, so I'm gonna ask you, there's a tuple with three different uh, values, one, two, and there's another list, one, two, three. And I wanna add something at the extreme end. Um, what do you think it's gonna happen? Error or no error? Let's say error, how many people think it's gonna like uh, throw an error. All right, and so the rest people, so everyone thinks that, almost everyone thinks that there's not gonna be an error. It, it looks like it will be an error, and it is true because tuples don't have any like assignment, so you can't just like assign to a tuple directly, but I wanna see what happened to my tuple. Oh, sorry. Hmm, hmm. All right, um, so it looks like my tuple changed, but why it happened? So let's see what, what's actually happening in the back. Um, so as I told you, this uh, plus equal to operator uses an I add in the, in the background. So when you say that, okay, I have a tuple and I wanna do something to, to the, uh, at the second position, I wanna, oh sorry, um, yeah. I wanna do something at the second index. And uh, what it actually does, it says, hey, I will take it, I will use the I add operator and it's basically like, just like extend, and uh, it will do it, it will finish it, and that's how this tuple is changed, but at the end when it's gonna return it, it's not gonna be successful, because I can't like, you know, add something, uh, assign something to a tuple. So that's why we see an error, and that's why we also see the tuple is changed. So this is the internal thing. Some little, for few more things. Is not, is not, is not. Um, so is not is a, is, a, is a single operator, so when you say, okay, is not, is not, is not, and um, it is true, which is perfectly fine, but uh, you can try things like this and uh, it will return some weird behavior. Um, just because when you do like an is not operator, it's a, it's a one single operator and it basically checks the first on the left hand side and the, uh, the, the second object on the right hand side. But in the second case, you can write parentheses to like separate uh, this is not operator into like two different operators, is and not. And uh, this makes perfect sense as well. Um, where are the others? Uh, there were more. Um, let's see, wait. Okay. Oh no, there are not. Anyways. Um, Reference equality versus value equality. Uh, we know that we have these things. Um, we have an equal equal, we also have an is operator. And uh, the way it works is like this, which is fairly simple. Um, yeah, because I have two empty lists. I wanna check like if those two lists are empty or not, which, is, which makes sense because in the first case, I am literally checking the values which are empty. But in the second case, I have two different lists. Although it seems like they just look like the same, they have nothing else. Uh, but they are like two different lists and uh, they live in a different memory address. So when you use this is, it basically uses the reference um, check um, and I'm running on time. And that's why we um, see an error. People coming from Java and C, C++ uh, would think that, okay, maybe I can try something like a plus plus or like a minus minus operator. It is fairly valid in Python, but it doesn't work like that. So I'm gonna try a little bit more with a minus minus operator it's not changing the value. I can do some like weird things. Uh, it works perfectly fine. Um, I can do something else like this as well, which is also perfectly fine. And I can do some even more like crazy things and it also works perfectly fine. And at the end, my A is not changed because it's still five. So what happens is this minus, minus is like plus, just like if you learned in like in elementary school, it basically works the same way. A plus zero, plus three equals to eight, which is fine, five plus three is eight. And also A minus seven plus five 
minus sorry plus six minus one which is eight which is also fine and at the end the value of a is still i'm not i'm not doing any assignments here with that uh there are a few resources you can look at there are a lot of things i learned on the internet and i uh want you to look at here feel free to like ask me questions we have run out of time but this is me on twitter and uh thank you thank you for coming and yeah, uh, thank you very much <laughs> yeah. i was really uh <laughs> yeah those were really funny, especially the right. uh, latest ones. Questions, just, uh, you were using Jupyter um, Notebook, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so that was one of the questions. We don't have time for others. Yeah, Last so time. I use this, uh, <laughs> so this is just a Jupyter Notebook. I use this plugin called Rice, which like converts your, uh, these uh, fragments into a slide type, and you can see something like this. Um, sorry, it's, I use really small. Yeah, something like this. So you can basically create a slide sort of thing uh, from your Jupyter Notebook and you can write code in it. Yeah. yeah but okay. it doesn't work all the time. Sometimes it just gets into some glitches. Thank you very much. Yeah.